Hello. Today we will be discussing the ethical concerns associated with medical tourism in developing countries. Medical tourism refers to the practice of traveling to a foreign country to receive health care. In recent years, as a consequence of the great expense of medical procedures in developed nations, the trend has been for citizens of developed countries to travel to less developed areas to receive care. The insurance industry has participated in this trend, offering incentives for patients willing to travel. This map shows some popular medical tourism destinations, for example, India, Thailand, and Malaysia. Destinations in Central and South America cater mostly to cosmetic surgery seekers, while those in Southeast Asia specialize in organ transplant and other surgical procedures. Three main ethical concerns of the practice of medical tourism are to be outlined here. First, the deterioration of access to health care for native populations of host countries. Second, internal brain drain. And third, the illegal marketing of organs and tissues. The accessibility of health care to the citizens of developing countries is threatened by the growing private sector of medical tourism. Developing nations already have a public health care system that is overburdened in cities and is basically non-existent in villages, and medical tourism will exacerbate unequal access to health care. Top quality treatment that is available to foreigners is off limits to most of the developing country's population, who can't afford to pay for health care. The unregulation of the private sector will further worsen health care access to the citizens in developing nations. Developing countries are establishing state-of-the-art hospitals with highly skilled doctors, but the challenge for these countries is to make such top-quality care available for its own citizens. The private hospitals are out of reach for the majority of people, and the revenue they bring in rarely makes its way to the public health sector. In India, the majority of citizens cannot afford the private health sector, and therefore are forced to resort to the weak public health care system. 70% of the rural population does not have access to proper health care, and the high costs of the private sector has caused some to not seek treatment at all. The decline of public investments in the health sector since 1992 has further weakened the public health sector, thus adversely affecting the poor and other vulnerable sections of society. The decline of the public health care system in India has led to the growth of the private health care sector. In Thailand, there was a rapid expansion of the private health sector in 1981, especially in Bangkok, that led to weakened resources for the public health sector. This worsened access to health care, particularly for the rural provincial level, establishing regional disparities in Thailand. The implementation of a universal health coverage system in 2001 has increased access to health care from 49% in 1991 to 71.6% in 2001 for all the citizens of Thailand. However, the country's public health system is still a long way from meeting its target of providing one doctor per 1,800 people, a key indicator of the quality of health care services provided by the government. Another consequence of medical tourism is the phenomenon known as brain drain. Physicians now have incentives to remain in developing countries after their training to practice medicine, contributing to their origin country's economy and healthcare system, and thereby reversing external brain drain. However, this external brain drain has been replaced with internal brain drain. Many public health systems in developing nations lack infrastructure, resources, and funding, encouraging native physicians and auxiliary healthcare professionals, such as nurses and administrative personnel, to work in the private sector. This trend is known as internal brain drain, where healthcare professionals are lured away from the public sector by private hospitals offering state of the art hospital technologies, increased salaries, and more benefits. The outflow of professionals from the public sector to the private one results in the widening of disparities in healthcare access in developing countries, as skilled professionals abandon the rural populations that use the public health system in developing nations. This outflow results in the generation of a two tiered health system, where there are different standards for different economic classes. Another phenomenon which demonstrates the grave ethical concerns associated with medical tourism and the commodification of health is organ trafficking. 
Organ trafficking is the illicit sale of organs involving an organ donor who is eager for the monetary reward and an organ recipient who is in need of transplant. Often, organ trafficking involves a broker who mediates the exchange and who also handles the financial trading. Currently, organ trafficking is illegal in every country except Iran, and the commercial living donors are from countries such as India, Philippines, China, Brazil, and Egypt. Organ trafficking is commonly referred to as a body tax on the poor, as the impoverished are economically coerced into selling their organs for the promise of monetary gains. Since organ trafficking is an illicit trade, organ transplantation often occurs in unsafe or unsanitary conditions, in which the organ donors do not receive proper care or follow-up after organ removal. In addition, since brokers arrange finances with the organ recipients, the brokers often take the majority of the payment and provide the donors with a very small sum, and in many cases, brokers refuse to pay the organ donor altogether. The most common form of organ trafficking is kidney trafficking, since donors are able to survive with only one kidney, and waiting lists for kidney transplants are up to 10 years, when patients on dialysis are likely to die in half of that time. In fact, of the 70,000 kidney transplants performed worldwide, estimates suggest that between 7,000 and 15,000 occur illegally. Certainly, organ trafficking is a global problem and one which needs to be curbed. The control of organ trafficking is a topic worthy of discussion in order to understand the current situation. In 1994, the United Nations declared organ trafficking a human rights violation, and as a result of the negative news, individual countries began to crack down on the practice. Nations have criminalized the trade, banned living donors, and sought after traffickers. However, these stringent national procedures has driven organ trafficking to an underground practice. Currently, organ trafficking is difficult to trace since the transplants can occur domestically, but also they can be exported for transplant into countries such as the United States and Saudi Arabia, which is challenging for control efforts. In addition, as enforcement efforts are not as stringent in some countries, organ trafficking simply shifts to the countries with weak monitoring or enforcement procedures. In the future, cadaver organ donation could be one way to circumvent some of the ethical considerations while providing benefits for both those in poverty and those in need of transplants. On a global scale, governments and nations alike need to work together to actively engage in the problem of organ trafficking and to universally recognize organ trafficking as a medical human rights abuse. Many couples in developed nations who are unable to have children lack the financial means to have children by surrogacy. State-of-the-art fertility clinics exist in countries like India and Mexico and are far less cost-prohibitive. In these countries, legal arrangements are less complex, and unlike in most Western countries, the couple is guaranteed a baby at the end of the process. However, the laws and regulations that do not exist in developing nations are the one designed to protect the physical and psychological well-being of the surrogate mothers, and in their absence this practice falls into an ethical gray area. While medical tourism seems to benefit both the host country and visiting patients, ethical shortcomings and long-term negative consequences have not been adequately considered. If allowed to continue without regulation, medical tourism will worsen already struggling public health care systems and continue to ignore the rights of native patients in developing countries. That concludes our presentation and we appreciate your time.